On today's show, well, it's a mailbag show. We cut loose and we answer your questions. Make sure you subscribe to this channel, like this video, leave a comment. I'm sure you will have some comments after the discussions we have on this episode. Stay tuned. Hey, this is Patrick Mahomes, quarterback for the Kansas City Chiefs, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Jason Moore, Mike Wright, Andy Holloway, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast for Thursday, February 10th. Judge Giamatti Al Borland in the building as well, and we are still here talking football with you. Oh, and it's- not tight ends today oh. so i'm super excited to be here you resent the tight end position i do i do because i've played fantasy football before i mean it, it's a it can be joyous for some how do we fix it it doesn't need fixing that's the, that's the right okay question. okay that's a I mean, philosophical question yeah. i mean i would say the 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 people have said yes because they have done things like uh, you know tight end premium changing the the tight end position to be it's an actually a flex it's a tight end slash wide receiver position does tight end premium fix the actual oh no no it, it just it just makes the good ones even better yeah, yeah that is the that's problem. like giving <laughs> kicker six per kick when you try to fix it by you know changing how much people get all it does is make the best ones better and Everyone that sucks still sucks. You can't yeah. make them catch more passes. Well, and some people change tight end to a uh, just like a tight end flex spot, right? And but where then, you can but it's then, tight end or wide receiver. Then it just it, it, it makes them it takes uh, strategy away. Yeah, and it makes you you know the the Kelseys and whoever else are not exciting then. Right, they're just another wide receiver. Exactly. So maybe it doesn't need fixing. Maybe we just need to have this discussion every year, and then the joy. Like this pain has to be so real because the joy of finding that good tight end That's is so true. good. That you, is how you, you need, fix it. You need balance. You draft the right late guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just, That's right. Just hit on all your draft picks. Yeah. We're going to jump into the mailbag, answer a ton of questions today on the show. I have one to start, a quick question of the day. I think this is a great dynasty question. I have this question for you two gentlemen. Yeah, I, I, it is basically should you, ah, Mister One Hundred One, should you draft for need or best available in dynasty rookie drafts? I have a very definitive answer. Is it the right answer though? Because that's what I'm in need yes. of. I traded last year for a pick that wound up to be the one hundred one in in our in our main dynasty league. I have just no running backs. I mean, my running backs. I, I've got Elijah Mitchell. If he's he might not be a thing. You know what I mean? Um, and then no running backs, great wide receivers, great quarterback, great tight end. I'm, I'm loaded elsewhere, but no running backs. But Mike, you have a, you have a history of sure. being in that situation and you made a boo-boo. Yes, I did make the boo-boo. Uh, I mean, cause it was, I ended up taking uh, what ended up being uh, Royce Freeman over DJ Moore. And I think if I were able to do that differently, now, I would take DJ Moore. Uh, it's uh, my answer is is uh, I draft for I draft the best player available. Um, you have it, like not only do you, then do you get a a great asset for your dynasty team, you get a a great player. But if you have a need, it's you can trade of a great asset for whatever it is that you need yeah, uh, I mean, and, and you, like factoring in just how confident you are that that player actually is going to hit it does that does matter to me as well yeah i mean you stole my thunder i was gonna say the same thing ah. it, basically my point was going to be you in, in a league like this you have yeah your team has a certain makeup of positions but realistically if you have an abundance in one area too few in another area it, it doesn't really matter like you can move parts around. It's like the highest net value for your team is the best thing for your team, and you can piece the rest together. 
You really mm-hmm. can. So take the very best player with the very best ceiling, with the very best fantasy output, and you know the only argument that I don't even know if I have an argument against that at all. I was trying to think of like a rookie class where there's really just one good player in one position. So you want to be the only one to get that guy. But even then, like that's going to fall in the normal organic order of good players. It makes a lot of sense. I remember several teams, managers, uh, players last year who had a George Kittle, a Travis Kelsey, and they were at the fourth, fifth, sixth pick in their draft, and there was Kyle Pitts. And they did not draft Kyle Pitts because they had Travis Kelsey That's or, a pretty or, or whatever. Use yeah, that case, is, so. but it, but it's a great example of fast forward. I you know, let's say you had Mark Andrews, and so that was the reason you didn't get him. And and maybe Mark Andrews is even more valuable than Kyle Pitts right now in a dynasty. The value that Kyle Pitts presents to your team to be able to trade and and go get another well, asset is is enormous. It, it's funny because I was trying to think in my head of like what way to illustrate this point the best and I almost think Madden score would do it because if you think of all your players on your roster with a score of 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 total talent you don't you know you draft the 99 you don't draft the 93 because it fits your team you draft the 99 so that your total team value is the best and then you go maneuver you're not going to win a dynasty league without trading you're not going to win a dynasty league without making moves and adjusting your roster, and you're probably going to have to do it even after you build your super roster, right? You're going to think you're locked in, and then you're not going to be. So that's the direction I go. I think there are some cases where, you know, that should be your difference maker, maybe your yeah, split it's a of a great tiebreaker. Tiebreaker for sure. Yeah, like, I use that. Now, I mean, again, now if, with with 2020 vision, it's just in hindsight, it doesn't look as great, but like. I had the 101 last year, um, and I was looking at I really needed running back, and I could also use some wide receiver help, but I was so madly in love with Najee Harris of like my, my confidence in him hitting as a pro, at least for a you know the short shelf life that is a, a running back, I felt it was very, very high, where Jamar Chase, again, I felt extremely confident in him. I mean, he's the fifth overall pick. You know, the scouts out there say he's the best wide receiver prospect in forever. But it was like, oh, I, I so I actually I did I let it tie break for me at the one on one and went Najee. Thankfully, I was able I had the three and got Jamar Chase there. But so it I guess it if you if there if the the margin is razor thin to you of your player evaluation, okay, I'll take the need. And the truth is, is you can. Weasel out of the situation. <laughs> if you really want to. You can weasel out of any situation. Well, I'm just saying if you really want to go with the player that fits the need but isn't the best player, trade then down. trade the pick. I mean, yeah. trade down, get value, draft the guy that meets the need, and, and you accomplish that pre-draft versus post-draft. I was thinking, though, do you go with the, uh, the, the more risky approach of, okay, I need, you know, I need a, a running back help, but the running backs in this draft, I don't like them. I'm going to take the superstar wide receiver. And then trade one of your vets for the the running back because if you have a valuable established veteran, their value could be even higher because not everyone gets the hype of a wide receiver like Jamar Chase, like the the Nikhil Harry year. Oh gosh, I mean, uh, granted he <clears throat> ends up as a as a uh, colossal failure for fantasy football, but like people you, felt so pressured into that pick. Freaking is he's on the Patriots with Tom Brady, it man. It really, it, I, to me that. Nikhil Harry situation was the worst case of uh I don't think that there was optimism around Nikhil Harry. There was some. Yeah, there I, mean, there, well, uh, I, I don't mean none. I just mean I don't think it was all about Nikhil. I think it was all about philo- philosophical dynasty picks. It yeah. was being hammered home, wide receiver, wide receiver, wide receiver, wide receiver, no matter what. For at least that's how it felt to me in that okay. time period was like you'd be you'd be a fool not to go wide receiver because you got to go wide receiver. Like to me, that wasn't evaluating the player that was available evaluating it was, the position. It was, that was Jacobs, right? Was that the yeah. the big question? Yes, was, was Harry or Jacobs? Yeah, mm-hmm. I think so. So it, it's it's interesting. We're gonna. I'm sure we'll have some dynasty questions, Brooksy, in today's mailbag. Oh yeah. Okay. So a couple of headlines for the oh, fo- the Foot Clan out there. God, come on, a couple of headlines. You got to we got the big stuff. There's a there's a big headline. <laughs> That's what I meant to say. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not hitting the button. I'm leaving that. <laughs> It's that good of a headline. 
Uh, the ultimate draft kit officially goes up for presale on Super Bowl Sunday. We're going to be doing a live stream sometime during Super Bowl Sunday, but when the clock, uh, what what is that? The uh, is that the thirteenth? That would be maybe. Yeah, that I would mean, be maybe the thirteenth. That it could would be, be the thirteenth. Correct. Thank you, Brooks. Told that, you. Calendars. Um, <laughs> When the 13th hits, you can get the Ultimate Draft Kit at ultimatedraftkit.com. You're going to get the lowest possible price. You'll be able to pre-order all of our award-winning rankings for the draft season, all the player profile videos, the custom scoring support, the mobile app, all the tools and analysis. Our baby. You're it's our baby. You're burying the lead here, man. Okay. Lead it. <laughs> what th You get a listener league oh, entry yes. if you hop in early. Whoa, 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 whoa. What in the you, world you, are you saying? You get a chance to get in the listener league. You get a chance. Yeah, do you see chance. Al Borland shaking his head so <laughs> profusely back there at you? Yes. I, if you pre-order, you have a chance to be a in chance, the listener league. Chance. We're giving away a spot to someone that pre-orders um, early on, and then that's someone. Yes, someone. Yeah, not, not everybody. Everyone. Um, look, I wasn't burying it. I was telling them what the UDK was in case they're new. Then I was getting to the promotion. But okay, uh, but fine. no, you feel free to give away. <laughs> Everyone gets a listener league. How many leagues spot. are you playing? In? There's going to be yes, Jason. <laughs> Twenty thousand. They would be leagues. listener leagues then, and then Jason's in them all. But um, no, last year we we brought you the UDK Plus, which has the Dynasty Pass. So if you play Dynasty. You're going to, uh, we, you know, we got the fantasy draft analyzer that we introduced last year as well. There's a lot to the UDK, and you can learn about it at ultimatedraftkit.com, and you can get a lot of perks for pre-ordering it. Basically, so on Super mm -hmm. Bowl Sunday, you get the chance to win that listener league spot. You get some uh, coupon codes uh, to shop ballers, to fantasy champs, and so this is the time. Super Bowl Sunday, best possible price. Ultimatedraftkit.com. Anything else I'm forgetting, Jason? Uh, I believe everyone gets a uh, listener league intro. <laughs> okay. Oh, gosh. Uh, we're going to need that legal disclaimer at the end of this show. Al, if you can take care legal of Legal disclaimer is don't listen to Jason Moore on any legal issues. <laughs> that is the just general rule. <laughs> Twitter at the FF Ballers. If you want to find out what's going on, we'll be posting information about the UDK on there as well. Let's talk news. News and notes from around the league. Um, the Titans have signed Mike Vrabel to a contract extension. Yes, well done, Mike Vrabel. Uh, congratulations on your extension. Really root for you to take home uh, Coach of the Year. Yep. No reason. <laughs> Certainly. So you you guys were talking no about this. financial reasons. Yeah, you guys are doing real well <laughs> in life. Um, so Mike Vrabel's up for Coach of the Year. Amongst, I mean, it makes sense, right? You've had injuries on the team and. Managed to turn in the number one yes. record in the AFC, and you no, guys, you guys were having issues with me saying that Zach Taylor could, should, or could win this award. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, come on, it's it's regular season, right? Uh, now I don't know if I believe that you were as convicted as you you sounded earlier. Well, I'm just, I just really want him to win. I uh, think he should win. Look, Zach Taylor uh, obviously has been a fine coach there in the Super Bowl. He would, they went ten and seven. They won their division. I would vote for him. You would vote for him over Vrabel. over Vrabel. I would over the number one seed. Absolutely. But one yeah. of them has Joe Burrow and one of them has Ryan Tannehill. Yeah, but one of them was it was a four win team last year, and so I think the turnaround is what people reward oftentimes in Coach of the Year is the turnaround. So I I would give it to the turnaround versus a team that everyone expected to win their division and be good. Just because he did it with some but they hardship. Ex they expected look, it with Derrick Henry. Look, you can't convincing me is not going to win you money, all right? But what if it did? <laughs> do you have a vote? <laughs> yes. Do you, yeah. I oh, do that's not. a very good question. Look, I if anyone Don't has even a walk vote down that road. <laughs> Pete Rose cannot be a part of this show. I mean, I don't Anyways, that's just my viewpoint. I just think he deserves it. In the end, though, all jokes aside, Mike Vrabel <laughs> is a phenomenal coach. He's one of my favorite, if not my favorite coach in the league right now. And yeah. he deserved this contract extension. He's he's great. Dennis Allen is the new head coach of the New Orleans Saints. They're, Good luck. Uh, defensive coordinator. You'll need it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Uh, not, not bullish on the future of the Saints, Mike. Uh, no. 
No. Uh, speaking of which, Alvin Kamara is scheduled to make his first appearance in court March yeah. 8th following his arrest on Sunday. Uh, I had read some legal overview of this situation. I shared it with you guys. Mm -hmm. Uh, had more details on actually what took place. There was a uh, somebody, a victim that had a broken orbital bone. It yes. took a while to file charges. It's not great. Actually, I, I want to correct that. Yeah, I don't believe there's charges filed. Yes. Correct. There is yes. an investigation as to whether charges should be filed. Yes. In the event, so we don't really know if there'll be any legal fallout whatsoever for the Camara situation. It's just making headlines, and it's probably furthering the opinion that Mike has that it may be rough on the Saints next year. Yep. Robert Woods rehabbing from surgery has an eye towards returning from mini camp. That's great. Uh, did you guys see the video of him and Cooper Cup? Yeah, so good. What are they doing? Uh, it was after are they, they broing down. It was it was a full bro down. Yeah. Oh it was, baby. It it, it would have thrown any. Uh, it would have thrown some severe doubt on the fact that they don't have breakfast together the same way that Stafford and Cup have breakfast together because it was touching. You got to go watch it. Okay. Because uh, Woods obviously has missed this Super Bowl run. And it was they were hugging and talking after the game, and it was like family, man. It was, it was what all right. Okay. You want to watch okay. something that makes you believe in the power of football, sure, and sports, and sports, yeah, yeah. humanity, friendship, and <laughs> yeah, it was awesome. It's a ship that can't sink. That's thank you, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> uh, any other news, Brooks? That is broken during the last five minutes? <laughs> no, sir. All right. How you doing, Al? Are you doing all right back there? I'm doing great. Yeah. You got any skin in the uh, Mike Vrabel for Coach of the Year game? Whoa! So these guys got in on some bets while I was out sick, and, and I didn't get any DMs. That, so no. So you're mad about it. Yeah. That is I so am. Al. Al is like... Um, Nobody makes money without me. That's that's right. <laughs> we need to examine this what about uh, with lose, a professional. Lose money. <laughs> they, people can lose money without him all they want. You do like being part of of the uh, the action. Can I say that? That's accurate. Yeah, yeah, you could say that. It's hard. It's hard when other people are doing stuff that seems exciting. We all have the great conviction. Oh, we. Oh, I don't need that in my life. Oh, he's doing. It. <laughs> oh, that looks fun. <laughs> oh, you want how much? Oh, uh, what's that line? Oh my okay. gosh. Yeah, and uh, we'll move on. Let's talk mailbag. 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 Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm in an off season mood. It's a mailbag show. It's loose. Yeah. Yeah. Uh we've got voicemails, Brooksy. We got one. Voicemail. Right. We got voice voicemail. Hey football, there's a question for you. I have Justin Jefferson and I'm trying to acquire Trey Lance. Guy is offering Trey Lance straight up for Justin Jefferson, wondering if I should take him. I already have Joe Burrow, Zach Wilson as my QBs in a two QB uh, super flex dynasty. Thanks. Love the show. Yeah, I mean, I I had to assume it was a two quarterback. Sure. But I'm not trading Justin Jefferson yeah. for Trey Lance. No, the don't don't get don't get crazy just because it's a two quarterback. One of these players is locked in as one of the best players at their position, great for fantasy. Uh, yeah, the quarterbacks are more important in a two-quarterback league, but Trey Lance is a giant question mark. You don't yeah. trade someone like Justin Jefferson for Trey Lance at all. No way. No, as, you know, as strongly as I believe in the fantasy football future of Trey Lance here for the next few years, if I were in a two-quarterback league, I would happily trade trade him for Justin Jefferson yeah I would trade him it, it, I'd like to do that in a single quarterback league too yeah all the intangibles and if anyone wants to do that and the opportunity for Lance will be there next year but there is far from a guarantee that he is going to be a long-term quarterback locked in you know even a player that has relative success like Carson Wentz you look at you know you you may put this situation in place with the career Carson Wentz has had you wouldn't do that deal no. And right. Carson Wentz had an MVP caliber season in sure. his repertoire. So um in his resume, I mean. So let's uh let's move on here. Twitter question from Andrew. How do you feel about point per completion for quarterbacks as a way of sort of offsetting mm. broken quarterback rushing scoring? Interesting. I've always thought that was um I've kind of liked it. Yeah. We do uh maybe a half per completion. We do like uh, point, point one. one. We do a point one per completion in our League of record and it 
I it think would offset. It does bring some balance. To like guys like uh, like just completion specials, like Drew Brees, where you know he's always completing a high percentage of his passes. But one thing you knew for sure about Drew Brees is he was never going to run for more than three yards, and I, and it gave him a bit of a boost to compete. I mean, think uh, about those the rushing quarterbacks. Think about the. Comp- I don't know if you can pull this up, Jason. Maybe mm-hmm. do this while we're we're doing the show. Give me the average completions for Lamar Jackson on a game. The average average com- completions sure. for Lamar Jackson. Let's just do this here, and um, and then I want to know the average completions for. So Lamar Jackson averaged twenty point five completions per game. Okay, give me give me a uh, pocket season. passer that that would be compared. Is it Matt, Matt Ryan? Ryan? Oh, oh man, man, that's a problem. Oh, Michael Keaton. <laughs> I was gonna say Matthew Stafford, maybe. Uh, well, Matt Ryan. Uh, Where was he? He was at twenty two point one. Okay, give me somebody better. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, it's somebody with higher volume. Well, I'm just thinking Brady would be the sure. Brady would be yeah, the give one me to really compare the non-mobile but high completions. He was twenty eight and a half. That, see, that's perfect per game. Because that's an extra eight, right? So that'd be eighty yards rushing. So if Lamar completes twenty, <sighs> that's a lot. If if Lamar completes twenty passes and runs for eighty yards, and Brady completes twenty eight passes, that's e- equivalent then I, points wise, right? I think the point is too much. I agree. Yeah. Okay. So a half. Yeah, but a half. It could be even fewer. Quarter. Quarter lower, point yeah. per completion. I'll go zero. <laughs> <laughs> I really like zero. Look, point. he already gets the yards. <laughs> it's not broken. I, I don't mind it. Um, I think it's a, a good balancing act there. You reward something that's very tangible in the game, a completion, and I'd be down with that. Or he just changes the, you know, the rushing. I don't like changing <laughs> the rushing <laughs> to not reflect running as a running back. But it's just funny that you were like – we're putting the, I, these band aids on something where you're like you could just do it. you could treat the cause. Well, okay, like, first of all, I think everything's fine as it is. That's okay. fair. So okay. I don't need to fix anything. I'm just trying to help you guys out with your problem. All right. <laughs> That's a really heavy emphasis there. It's, it's, it's today's a day. Yep. I had a rice krispie treat, like a full one oh. at lunch. I'm a little. You're wired. I'm a little. <laughs> You're just, you're going I'm wild. Nuts. From a Rice Krispie treat? <laughs> I, I'm telling you, today feels special. All right, let's keep it going. Anybody else have dessert at lunch? Am I the only one? That's yeah, why I'm on a different yeah. wavelength. Dessert's great, though. I'm a huge fan of dessert. Okay. Was That's it? it. <laughs> That's it? That's yeah. the whole end of the sentence? Uh, Instagram question from Dalton Miles. What's the most amount of leagues you have participated in in a single season? I think it was like eight or nine. I was around ten. Yeah. Oh, and it's just the worst. Yeah. When, when participated you, is the right word. When you hit waiver day, and you go, Ugh, that's a it's bad. That means you're in too many leagues. Because <laughs> you gotta you gotta head into the coal mine and do yeah. your work that day. Ugh. When you hit Sunday and you go, oh crap, <laughs> oh, I didn't check that league. When you're staring at the screen and you're simultaneously happy and sad for every player that does every single thing. Yeah, uh-huh. that that also is a problem. Two or three leagues. Multiples if you're in Dynasty. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Makes it more fun. Uh, Dominic, what's your take on where J.K. Dobbins can finish by the end of 2022? Ooh. So think, like a ceiling call for J.K.? Yeah, I, I think his ceiling would be a, a top eight running back. Oh, my I, gosh, eight's the number in my head. Yeah, I, I think that that is where he can get more passing work than – I mean, this was kind of the argument coming into last year, the belief as to whether or not he would get more passing work. I believe what they showed with their transactions last year, getting in Bateman, and what happened on the field, they want Lamar to throw the ball a little bit more, and part of that's going to be utilizing the running back as a receiver, which they had not done in the previous successful season. You should give me the completion number from the year before, now that we just looked that up for Lamar. Uh, per game? The 20.5 from this last year. Lower. I know he missed some time, but I, yeah, he's probably 17, 18 per game. Uh, I doubt it was that low, but I will tell you. Okay. Yeah, I'll just kind of stall he a little He averaged bit. Uh, 16 completions per game. Oh, yeah. brother. Yeah, makes sense. Makes sense. And the, and the running backs, like, Devonta Freeman had relevance this year. Yes, he did. That is a sentence that shouldn't have been true. That's a, yeah. Yes. So, Dobbins has the chance to come in and score some touchdowns and be really involved. 
Dobbins was a top 24 running back. He was running back 21 on 44% of snaps. Do you think he can finish? Games. Like uh, Jason and I put the line at eight as a ceiling. I think that's pretty good. Okay. I don't know that I would go higher because I don't see a world where all of a sudden Dobbins is a 40 plus reception guy and you either need that or you got to hit, you know, 13 or more rushing touchdowns. You have to have an outlier somewhere. Nathan writes in on Instagram with a, an important question that I think is right up both of your alley. Uh, what, is the coin toss going to be heads or tails? Oh, tails. Ooh. You go, you're a tails never fails? Tails never fails, man. Is it just because it rhymes, though? No. No, it's because <laughs> I'm right. Uh, I'll go heads. We we just I, I was at this event the other day. Oh, man. Was, was it the, our, the event of me and Andy where tails failed? No, 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 no. Because that uh, did just happen. Yeah. I got a sweet, rare Debo NFL all-day card because Mike lost a coin flip. Yeah, Because you told me that Tails never fails. Well, Ooh. Tails never fails for me. <laughs> Was that one of those Jason guarantees? <laughs> <laughs> Lock it in. Yeah. All right. It's going to be Tails. Uh, Mike, you need to weigh in here. It's very important. Uh, With your recent history, do you yeah, have a changing I mean, I'm, opinion? I'm, I've been burned by Tails recently. <laughs> I got to change up my strategy. Uh, go ahead. Don't All be right. a fool. Oh no! All right, Jason can stand alone. Uh, what would you trade for Cordero Patterson and rookie picks in a dynasty league? Nate Jensen, eighty-five on Instagram, wants to know. Oof. Cordero is uh, the word on the street. Almost nothing uh, is that he is he is pandering for the Falcons to bring him back. I of course he is. That if I were Mister Patterson, that is what I would want. I think as well. he had a nice time. He got to be a more integral part of the offense, whether it's by necessity or not. He he was – look, there were other people as a part of the Falcons' offense that did not produce. Sure. Because they ne necessarily had to be. Yeah, he because they were Mike Davis. Yeah. Yeah, or, or anybody not named Russell Gage in the wide receiver court. But Patterson did look like he could help a team. So would you trade anything? Uh, would you trade a third-round pick for a quarter? Sure. Or? Yeah. Okay. Third, but even that's, that is that's the tippy-toppy. I mean, a third-round pick is already a gamble. Although they do hit, I mean, if you're in a single quarterback league, frequently you'll see a, one of the top drafted quarterbacks just drop into the third round, and you should almost always draft that player there. I think I got uh, you got Mac Jones, Mac Jones, like third every last pick. year. Like it just one of them always falls into the third, so there's some safety, or you can go for upside. I just think that the probability that Atlanta does nothing else of note. At the running back position, They're, and they look at their roster from last year, go, "That's it, re-roll it." Mike Davis and Cordero Patterson. I, that's like an astronomically low number. They can cut Mike Davis for a seven hundred fifty thousand dollars dead. Oh, cap really? This this off season, okay. And they should. Yeah, I mean, they need to bring someone else in. Twitter question from Matt wants to know another toughie here: uh, white queso or yellow queso? Oh, both are great. Okay, white. You're a white. Where now? Why? Why? I need to know why. I mean, that's got to be. Why is that? The, is it a flavor thing? It is a flavor thing. White cheeses are usually like a white cheddar. Is like sensation? a white. I like a, a white, white American. A okay. white cheddar. A white American. If you just compare those flavors to their yellow I just counterparts, don't know why they are usually oh, see, more I'm, delicious and uh, also Colby more, overall more award winning. What? No, wait. Yeah. You know this to be true? I do know this to be true. More award-winning cheeses okay. are white? for Based on flavor, yeah. State your sources, sir. The grocery stores. Go look at the packages. Go go look the at the packages. The grocery stores? Wait, you're looking at the testimonials on the cheese On the that marketing on the cheese itself. <laughs> That's darn right I am. <laughs> so you walked around and you came away from the I only, part of the store with thinking, boy, that, those... Those white cheeses are award-winning cheeses. I only purchase award-winning cheeses, Andy. Okay. And so... I don't believe that for a minute. No, I get a lot of different <laughs> cheeses, but I prefer award-winning Give What's your stance on Velveeta? Velveeta is not a cheese, yes, but it I is agree awesome. That. I agree. It's the miracle whip of cheeses. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the, Colby is my favorite cheese. I don't Colby's think... Colby's delicious. I don't think they're making... Like a queso out of Colby, though. I thought, <laughs> thought you were going to say, I don't think they're making big bucks on Colby. Because oh, it's not... I mean, be. it's uh yeah, it's kind of an indie cheese. It is. <laughs> it's not. It's not nearly in enough places. I agree. Yeah, yeah because if it was, if you could just get it in the door. But this is kind of like you know how you go to the restaurants and they have the occasional soda that's like nowhere else. Right. And yeah. You're like that's the best soda. They got. They have a RC here. Yeah, but they, they're not everywhere, so they can't be the best. Yeah. Yeah. 
You need to get in there and start lobbying for Colby. Well, th- see, the the thing is, like, they they tried to sneak in with Colby Jack because that's like, yeah, because people want the spice. Yeah, that's that's around, and I have no no uh, quarrel with Colby Jack, but just Colby is just is the superior cheese. <laughs> I don't have any I don't have any quarrels <laughs> with with any cheeses right now. <laughs> I am considering. <laughs> no, I cheese as a whole is great. It's great, and we yeah. could talk about it for just days. Possibly. Favorite cheese, Brooksy? Ah, uh, just cheddar. Uh, of course. Pfft. Oh, kid me you like over a, here. You like a thick slice or a th- like a thin slice? Shredded. Ah, uh, thin. Thin. If I were to right. pick. So you, Al, you know, Al's just waiting to jump in. I was just ready in case you asked. Yeah. So thank you for asking. Uh, Colby Pepper Jack. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Wait, that's a, a separate thing? or you, is, uh, is, is that, that a long Colby name? Jack? Is that the long name for Colby Jack? Uh, no, I believe it's Colby the form, Jack it's is the proper name. Col- Colby Jack is just Colby and Monterey Jack, I believe. Oh, and then Pepper Jack is the introduction Whole of peppers in the said world. cheese. So there is Colby Pepper Jack. Yes, sir. Oh. Mm. Sometimes I think we take things too. Is far. it award winning? <laughs> no. Is it, is it? What color are we working with here? It's got to be yellow, yellow and white. With the those are the only two colors in. of cheese, though, right? I think so. unless something's gone horribly <laughs> wrong. <laughs> 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 yes, eventually you get a green cheese. You do. I don't think I can think of any. You, you've got like the red blue cheese, blue cheese, <laughs> but blue cheese is white. We're still going. Anything else? Anybody? What color are Wind? cheese? <laughs> when does football start? What color are cheese? Are cheese? Yes, yes. Uh, ah. Naturally white, off white, or even golden yellow. Those, okay. those are your options. That's the full. Pantheon of cheese colors. Got it. All right. We have to keep talking about this. But Matt Gorman has a question. Uh, have you ever completed a multi-team trade? I have not. Not in formality. I've done a lot of trades where I'm secretly working too, and I have one Some de- contingent dependent on the other, and then they both happen at the same time. 100%. I've done, uh, I've done that where... It's just a lot of work to do a full three-team trade. Yeah, because you have to convince two other people uh, versus... You know, convincing like when you convince them one at a time, it's so much easier than having to convince multiples. Have you done a three way trade? I have not. No. All right, okay. Twitter. What is the highest first round pick that you would trade for DJ Moore? This is a great question. This it comes is. from Kindle Low uh, on Twitter, and this, like this is very philosophical because okay, well, let's. Where do you stand, Andy, uh, on DJ Moore's talent as a wide receiver in the NFL? I think he is a uh, an exceptional talent. Okay, so yeah. okay, so we we do agree that he is one of the better wide receivers, and I he's got to still be young. He's he twenty four years twenty four years old. He's three three straight eleven hundred yard seasons. Yes, um, makes highlight reel plays on the on the reg, but has been kind of confined to the four touchdown club, and he could and be again. quarterback issues. So, how high would I trade? I would probably trade. I would probably trade the third pick. Really? Okay. I would, I, I'd be that. I'd I'd go that high. Yeah. Yeah. I, th- I think it, Mike's right. It's a philosophical question because what you're doing when you're grabbing these wide receivers is you're hoping in the first round that you're going to get someone even better than DJ Moore. You you know DJ Moore seems like he's capped as like a wide receiver 15, and so philosophically, would you rather have? A, a but 50% he could be chance. better if his his situation improved. Yes, he could be, but we've said that for a long time. Um, I, I don't, don't know feel that like his situation is going to. You get feel better. any different about McLaurin? I mean, I feel like those two guys very are the, similar are in the identical boat of like the the difference. Being, should you buy? The difference is DJ Moore is twenty four. I think McLaurin's already twenty seven. Twenty twenty six. Twenty six, which is crazy, right? Because DJ Moore has been in the league longer. Yes, because yes. he, he entered the league before he. could But drive. I mean, McLaurin two straight years, eleven hundred and ten fifty three on limited games. So. I mean, both of those are bets on talent. Yes, that's what that's and, what I mean by philosophical. And I mean, if you're twenty, twenty four, or twenty six, like the window to find a quarterback, both of those franchises to find something better mm-hmm. than what they've had. But are you talking about the commander? The Ma- the Manders. The Manders. Oh, I'm 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 full locked oh, in on the, Manders. You're into it. Huh? Yes, the Manders. Uh, um, uh, I think I don't think I would go top three. Because they're I, like I, I think. Yeah, Brees, I mean, there's good wide receivers think, in this. Yes, Brees is good. There's a couple wide receivers who look the top five, like number five. Le- I think 105, maybe. I might, I might be softening a little and go that direction. 
it's hard because the promise is always <laughs> so powerful. Yes. Um, let me ask you this then, okay? DJ Moore in a dynasty or Devontae Smith? <sighs> Devontae Smith. I think DJ Moore's better. So that that's an example of like where did Devontae Smith go in last year's rookie draft? Uh, like Probably four around. or five. Okay, so that that's kind of the the player that had you had you rolled the dice, you traded your five away for DJ Moore. Mm -hmm. You would have gotten somebody like Devontae Smith. Yeah, he and he was our he was our fifth pick in this last year. And obviously, there are picks um, that don't work out. Rashad Bateman was in the first round of a lot of drafts, injured. Uh, sure, you know, but um, you you know you know that DJ Moore has value yes but it's capped all right uh in honor of the commanders youtube question from da demanders what are the top three nfl teams that you would rename the packers oh well you don't like the packers it's a dumb name okay i mean it's classic i love yeah they That's are the green bay packers and and but it's like if i were just looking at the names on a sheet of paper yeah well, i'm looking at them now i'm trying to see which ones would be voted that way packers would be in there that makes sense um i would and it's it's hard to say because it's your team oh, so you yeah. are just emotionally connected but the fact that the arizona cardinals came down here yeah and i mean they were the phoenix cardinals at the time and didn't take that opportunity to rebrand to something that actually is prominent yeah. in arizona is okay. still it's i still have a and little the bit of the browns mind. have got to be the browns are what an awful name what what <laughs> What about the Steelers? Do you like the Steelers? I yeah, do. the Steelers are great. Yeah, yeah. Especially no, with that. So you like the Steelers. I do. And why, especially in Pittsburgh? The steel work. Yeah. The, but that's what the Packers are. The Packers are there for their, their uh, the, the move, paper. Helping people move? <laughs> no, that's not what they're boxing it up. And it's the packing mills, right? Yeah, it was Acme Packing Company. Yeah, so it's the exact wait, same wait, as wait. the Steelers. Acme? Wait, 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 wait. It was or it is? Like, Acme? is this still like a really important source of revenue yes. for that city? I couldn't answer that. I don't know. Andy says yes because it helps his argument, but he has no idea. And I think he's Googling and finding I, out. Look, I, I mean, need the, to go back to Acme. Like, there's a real Acme company out there that's not selling Wiley E. Coyote it terrible was stuff. The Acme Packers then became they were they started as the Acme Packers. Were they a joke? <laughs> I mean, maybe that is the reverse order, Mike. Maybe that's where the the joke came from. I don't know. Okay. There's going to be a lot of comments on today's episode with the whole history that we'll be able to read and how much. Excuse we, me, sir. And how much we got wrong. Yeah, the Car the Cardinals are terrible. What a what a dumb yeah. mascot. A strike just fear into the. We just the don't have it. Oh, they, you you don't like it because it's such a. It either has to have really bird. important meaning to the city, Cardinals, or it's got to be. Cool. Or it's got. It, Cardinals, yeah. That's why there's so many Cardinals. If you threw all a football at a Cardinal, it's. I mean, it's over. That, if that's the line we're looking at, let me ask you this. In, Can you hit it with a football no, no, and no, it no. lives? No. Would you rather be, you know, the the Arizona Cardinals or something in the vein of the Houston Texans? So you're like, we're the Phoenix Arizonans. Mm. I would rather be that. The Phoenix Arizonans? Yes. Well, okay. or as we call better, them, the better than you know. Arizonians? Yeah. Now, my uh, Wisconsin family is probably going to be disappointed in me, but the Acme uh, Packing Company did close in 1943. Ah. Okay, so that's my point. It's like... It, the steel work had a good is run. still going on in Pittsburgh. Also, You're, last this is you sponsored by Big Steel. The last <laughs> the last one here is the Bills. Um, I would change the Bills because of their what we found out on this, the Spitballers that the, podcast the that barbershop quartet yeah, thing yes. something to do with a barbershop quartet. Their mascot somewhere. is not a Bill, and well, so, because it's it's a Buffalo because they're from Buffalo. Yes, or it's not a Buffalo, but it's not a Buffalo. It's a barbershop quartet. <laughs> We're going to get a lot of corrections <laughs> to this episode. I'm just throwing that out there. Uh, let's go. Should I trade Camara for pennies in a dynasty league because of this situation? No. Instagram question from Piano Paul. No, Definitely not. And this is not an endorsement at all of Alvin Kamara's behavior, but we don't know. I mean, I would it, put it, the it, odds that 80% nothing happens. Yeah. Um, and then you, you could find out genuinely that. I don't know. He was attacked, and he attacked him back, and now they're figuring out the situation. I don't know and what like, happened. And right, it, it, we we do not know. And then if you just take the the larger look, like I don't recall off the top of my head in Alvin Kamara's situation. Like am I am I forgetting something no, no, glaring that I'm embarrassed that I don't remember? No. Not so that. like this would be 
he's been in the league a while. It he had a really unfortunate event and made some bad decisions. It sounds like, and at the most, it'll be a couple game suspension, and then he'll be Alvin Kamara again. See the official the official report from Buffalo is that they were named from the All American Football Conference franchise that was named after the Western Frontiersman Buffalo Bill. Why did I get stuck with a barbershop quartet? When because I it's, it's them there spitballs? somewhere. Because, because I was, was, I was, was rumored in some circles, and it was enough to, to yeah. really lean in on, on you. I was able to spin it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just trying to make sure we tell the truth to the make the Buffalo Bills fans out there feel bad. Yeah. They feel bad already. Yeah. They didn't get the ball in overtime. I feel like Bills fans have to be pretty happy with their franchise right now. Yeah. Yeah, it still stinks. Uh, Instagram, the California Mondor says keeper for 2022. Would you rather take Najee for a second round pick or Mark Andrews for a fifth? Oh, okay. It's interesting. I think you're getting, you know, at least a slight Najee will be a first rounder, right? Yes. You guys I think of Najee will definitely be a first round. Pick. Yeah. It's a value on both. And Andrews will be a second late, early third. I was going to say, he's, I would think you go in the third, but he could, maybe he goes in the late second. He's made quite the impression on you, but I don't know if it's quite as big for everybody else. Yeah, I mean, I, I think about the last couple of years, Kelsey's been in the first round, right? And this year, the number one was... Pitts Mark is going higher than Andrews in some leagues, for sure. Uh, that Definitely would, that Dynasty. Would be dynasty. Oh, well, dynasty of course, Dynasty. Right now, sure. But yeah, yeah. For a keeper, I would go... Yeah, you could be right. He could be a second round pick. I think I'd go Najee. I'll just take the one running, running back. back. Yeah. That's, that's three for three. Yeah. Yeah, we saw. I mean, we saw the target share and the target totals for Mark Andrews. It does. It could be that level up that's permanent. It could be. Could be yeah, something could that was a one-year yeah. quarterback turnover fluctuation. We and that being said, there's obviously going to be a lot of fluctuation for Najee losing Big Ben. You don't know that his target number could come down by forty this year. Yeah, yeah. I think we're going to wrap it up. I want to remind you. UltimateDraftKit.com this Sunday. Make sure you get in on the pre-sale. You're going to get access, if you get the UDK Plus, to the Dynasty Pass. Mike, talk about just a few of the things you get access to at the Dynasty Pass. So the Dynasty Pass, what's fantastic about it is you'll have access to just the first version, which means there will be updates. Multiple we, releases. Yes, multiple releases where we release more content and update it after the Combine happens. We let you know rises and fallers. And then, of course, after the NFL draft, the final version of that comes out. There's rookie rankings in there immediately. Just completed available. our rookie mock draft. We do three mock drafts to let you know that the temperature of uh, some of the, the great minds out there in the fantasy football space. And then my favorite is it's the production profile. This is where you look at college players and their market shares across their either generally their final season or their their best season if something happened in that final season and comparing it to professionals who we already know are good and that's it's it's a nice way to look at data and just you know dig in the in the in the gems or in the, in the mind for a gem for a player who the NFL may have overlooked or just you know confirm that you know this player is is in fact as dominant as I think they will be and make sure you follow us on social media cuz like I said we're going to go live sometime on Sunday uh, I think we're still finalizing what time that will be, but um, follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. You'll know exactly when that is. Or head over to YouTube.com slash the fantasy footballers. Subscribe and click the bell, and we'll let you know when we are live. That is it for today. Thanks for tuning in. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.